Hello everyone. I want to start talking about the coding side of Twine and some of the cool things you can do with it. I want to talk about click and if commands in Turing. So let's start a story here and we'll call it the choice adventure. We'll start a new one. We'll begin our story by just having the usual you wake up in the morning and reach over to turn on your lights. And what we're going to have now is the click command, which is just click. And I'm going to have the player click on the word lights. And you can see it's a command because it has that color pink, which is unique to Twine. And then you can have the condition, which is the green teal color there. So you have click being the command, lights being the word. One square bracket, not two. You're not creating a new passage. And I'm going to say, well, you turn on your lights and what you realize is you're late for class. So you look at the clock only to realize you are late for school. And then I close the single bracket. So now I have that yellow. Anything between the two brackets is what's going to show up when I click on the word lights. So to us, it looks almost identical. It still looks looks like I'm going to be taken to a different passage, but that's not the case. When I click on it, the passage remains and it just opens or shows me new content. So that's something unique to the command click. It doesn't take me anywhere. It just expands and elaborates on what's already there. And between these two brackets, you can add whatever you want. So I can even add more choices. So I can say, uh, go to eat breakfast, double bracket. Or I can say, rush out to school. And now I have two choices. So again, I have my two choices. I can try it again, click lights and you look at the clock you only to realize you're late for school go to eat breakfast or rush out to school and those are now choices so they take me to a whole new passage again it's easier and nice to always have this to be shorter so i'm going to do one straight line and i'm going to call this just eat and i'm going to call this just door because you're rushing out to school through the door uh, what that does for us is it just makes the passages shorter to recall. It's just called eat and door, not rush out to school and go to eat breakfast, which is a lot longer. And we're going to see when we talk about if or uh, history commands, it's a little bit easier to have shorter things to recall. So it still looks the same to the player. So I turn on the lights. The passage looks the same, but it's just to us, it's just called something easier and smaller. And like I said, you can add audio, video, and images. So in this case, I turn on the lights. So I want to see the lights. Uh, this one looks like a nice ceiling light opening a new passage. And I have here my URL. I'm going to copy that URL. And again, I can add whatever I want. So I'm going to add the picture by using the code image. Image source is equal to the URL close that with my triangle I can see one more time turn on the lights you look at the clock only to realize you're late for school so that's the lights being turned on do you go eat breakfast or rush out to school this picture is kind of large we know how to change that as well just with here we can just add my different dimensions so I can add something smaller so let's say 500 by 500, so it's just kind of a square. 500. So if I run this now, it should be a little bit smaller and kind of more concise. And there you go. So I have 500 by 500, a square. I can choose my choices. So that's what the click command is. I click on something, something appears. Again, the pink is to indicate that that command is being used. Lights is the condition. Again, it has to be something that is in the passage before. So if I did something that is not there, so let's say I ask you to click on eggs, which is not a word anywhere in this passage. When I run the program, the program won't run because there's nothing to click. So I will never see the passage appear. So make sure that the condition for the click is a word that is previously seen by the player or else it just won't make sense. All right. So if you eat breakfast, you 
eat a very yummy breakfast. After that, you are going to go to school. Go, go to school. And I'll just call this passage school. And I'm going to copy that for both sides so that they both go to the same spot. You rush out of bed, get dressed, and straight to school you go. So no breakfast in this passage here. And they both take me to the same spot. And now here's where the if command is going to come in. I'm going to have a history check. What that means is I'm going to say if in the player's history, they went through the command called or the story called bed or I think it was called breakfast let me just double check what I call it I call it eat three letter word eat what that means is the if statement is checking has the player gone through the passage called eat and again I made it short and easy to remember so that I don't have to type again what it was before which was like go to breakfast way longer way harder to remember eat is nice and simple so if the player has gone there, they will see the following passage. They'll say, you get to school just in time and you are full of energy from the yummy breakfast. And again, just because, like the click command, I do a single square bracket and close it. And you see that it's a little bit yellow tint to show that's going to show up. You head straight straight to your math class now let's see what happens with my history command so if I play my game now I turn on the lights I go to eat breakfast I have a yummy breakfast I go to school I see the top and the bottom I see both passages however if I play it and go the other way lights rush out go to school I only see the bottom I don't pass the the if co if command. I don't pass the true statement. I have not gone through eat, so I don't get to see this. If you want the player to see something different depending on the path, instead of adding multiple if commands, I can just add else since there's only one other option. So if the player goes through the path eat, they see this. Else or or else they will see something else so I can say you get to school feeling very tired and grumpy because of your empty stomach so you still make it to school but you're not feeling very good because you didn't have that yummy breakfast so now I have two conditions I have if they go through the breakfast they go to school they get the first statement if however they go rush to school, no breakfast, they get a different statement. And again, you can put anything in those brackets. So I can put an image, a video, an audio. So pretty much the player can have two entirely different experiences just depending on which path they take by using two different commands. One of them is the if history. And again, we're only checking the history, but you can use if statements for a lot more and more complicated things, but it's starting to get a little bit into the coding language where you have if and then statements. And we also learned about the click command where you click on something and instead of taking you to a whole new passage and always changing the story, you can have more information being revealed. So it's a little bit of an exciting for dramatic or action or mystery where you click on something and something appears or a clue shows up or the story changes and more text is revealed to you. Again, can, can be also an image, a video, an audio, whatever you want to add between those brackets. So now you have a little bit of an idea for the if command and the click command. Click just to reveal something new and then the if command just to show you uh, two different options. So again, depending on where the player has been through, we can have different alternatives even though it's the same exact path. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.